Well, hey, we're going to continue our What About Meerman series and do a comparison of Meerman hand-welted split toes uh, to the other uh, hand-welted split toes in the collection. Now, this is a uh, 106 596, so has the same um, uh, beautiful apron and reverse stitch that the... Um, uh, that the Goodyear welted version had. This actually has a Norvegies stitch weld. So here, let me get that for you so you can see that a little bit better. Just a beautiful chain stitch pattern. Now the sole, now I think this is always very interesting. The sole on these is not as well finished. So the, the edge, not just specifically the edge, is not as well finished. This is still a blind stitch sole. And uh, you know, they've done, they've done a nice job here. The heel is the same. So, um, you know, you get a little bit more um, on, the, on the welt and a little less on the, on the edge. Um, the shoes themselves actually fit a little bit looser than the, um, than the, than the Goodyear welted variety of this. Um, and I think that that's because as they're hand welting it, they're just not pulling it as tight over the last. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when you're sizing. I probably could have gone down a size. The, um, the facing on this nearly closes. Doesn't quite, but nearly does, where I've got a good centimeter between it on the, uh, on the Goodyear welted ones. So um, interesting, uh, interesting stuff. So this is the Meerman. This is in Utah calf. Uh, this has Depoy uh, lining. Um, this is actually a complete custom job. They don't make this in this uh, particular makeup and I asked them to do this for me. You can see that there are a double sole. You can also see that the double sole is actually really double. So you can see the welt is very thick. Um, you can see they've got big fudging on it. And then you can see the midsole and the sole are actually the same width, which is not always common. Usually the midsole is pretty thin. So uh, just something there to uh, keep in mind. So they, they did a nice job with the shoe overall, but that is something to, uh, to keep in mind as, as we're looking at it. Now, as I start comparing this to the shoes, now this is hand welted, but it's also custom. So when I, um, you know, talk about price on this, um, I did spend about 500 bucks for these, uh, which is a lot for Meerman, um, but only about 130 more uh, than it would normally list at. And that was uh, for the MTO and for the JR soles, um, and uh, you know, and for the hand welting. So now, as we uh, as we look at what I'm comparing it to, uh, we're going to start with a Hephaestus um, hand welted split toe. Now, you can see here, this has a beautiful pie crust apron on the uh, on this. Now, this is in um, hatch grain versus Utah calf, but it's very similar. Right. And this is dark, dark brown. Looks almost black, but not quite. This has a skin stitch toe, so quite a bit uh, more technically difficult on the toe uh, than it is on the Meerman. And that's weird. The focus didn't click. Sorry about that. So, um, but it's a, um, so while the apron is definitely nicer, uh, the split toe is a lot nicer. And um, now this is not a Norvegie stitch. This is just a regular hand welted. Um, so it's um, a little bit different there. Now, what I will say is that I like the last on this a lot better. Um, this is just a really gorgeous flowing last where the Meerman is kind of a chunky roundish last. So that you can even see that just looking at the toes where this is round and this has a little bit of an edge to it. It's not quite chiseled, but it does have an edge to it, uh, which is uh, interesting. Now, this has really big line there on the heel cap. Um, uh, and uh, it's a little bit of a bubble in the heel here as well. Uh, if we look at the Meerman, uh, they actually did the um, cutting so they didn't have to have the seam in the back, which is unusual um, level of clicking for Meerman um, and uh, really kind of a step above what you'll see 
on most Meerman's shoes. Now, moving up the ladder. So let's take a look at soles. The Hephaestus sole uh, has no rubber pad, but is very, very well done. It has a very defined fiddleback waist and a, uh, a, a, a set area where it's kind of flat. It's not quite flat. It does have the rounded, very much like higher end shoes. Um, it's more, this is, doesn't really have a, a bevel on the waist and uh, just relatively straight here as well. Has a little bit of a, a give there. Um, but not uh, not much. Now this is also in a hash grain, uh, and this also has a much nicer um, apron pattern. Okay, you can see that this is not quite as nice as the Hephaestus was, um, and these cost about fifty bucks more, so very much in line. Um, but they do have a uh, skin stitch as well, although not quite to the same degree. Now, when we compare that to the Yosal, Yosal has much more of a kind of a round part on the bottom, but then look at that waist. That is just an incredible waist, and that heel is tiny because that is actually a tapered heel, uh, which is very different than what you see here. All right. So, um, big difference. Also, look at the uh, heel pads here. These heel pads are relatively thick. When you look here, these heel pads are razor thin comparatively. So, you know, the heel work on this is, is definitely better. Uh, it is tapered, which you either like or you don't, right? The toe is better than it is here. Right here, you can see the stitches here. It is combined and, and clearer. I'm just gonna bring this up here so you can see it a little bit better. And just for comparison's sake, I'll include this one here as well, so you can kind of see how they're different. Now you see how you can see the pattern of the stitching on the apron here? A little bit more defined, a little bit wider than it is here, but this is still very, very well defined. Here, it's less defined. Now, this is probably the best one that, that Meerman does, and is very nice comparatively but it's just not as well defined as it is on these. Okay, and keep in mind this definition as we get deeper into our discussion here today, we will see a few other shoes that have even better. So now as we uh, start getting deeper into this, we're going to move to an October 10th. Now the October 10th uh, shoes, do normally have that pattern, but because I mix the suede here, the suede doesn't necessarily hold that uh, that pattern, that stitch pattern where you're stitching through the leather quite as well, so that's not as visible. Now this has this beautiful skin stitch uh, tension look to it. Now this is a reverse stitch, this is the typical skin stitch. When it's completely flat and just side to side, sometimes they call that a butt stitch. I'm not a cobbler, I don't necessarily understand the intricacies of that, but it is something that's interesting. Now, this also has really nice fudging, okay, which is uh, just always interesting to look at. You can see it there on the, on the side. And um, they do a real nice job. This also has a very, very nice fiddleback waist sole, and the heel is very, very similar uh, to the uh, Yosol, but it's straight and not tapered. Now, a lot of folks actually consider the October 10th and the Yosol to be made in the same factory. I haven't been able to get anybody in the factory to actually confirm that or from either brand, although a number of people have, have said that that's the case. So that said, there are different lasts, there are different shoes. Um, it is an interesting thing. Now, here you can see that the, the dis distance between the stitch lines on the heel is much narrower here than it is on the Yosol. Um, more like what it is here on the Meerman. Okay. So another interesting difference there. Now we're gonna move away from Asia and move to Italy for this next one. This is an Enzo Bonifay. 
And um, Enzo Bonafé has a number of different options available to it. I actually have one on order that will have a, uh, a skin stitch um, uh, join here. But up here, this is a very different pattern. All right. It's kind of like a French where it's over, but it's really a join. And they do have the tension on it to kind of make it look like a pie crust, but not quite. All right. You see here that it's joined, but not quite. So again, it's a different style. Now this is a, um, a totally different style of shoe. You see it has two top lines. Uh, it does have the, uh, the back of the shoe is the same piece of leather with no seam. They have a seam here where it connects. So, so it's a nice looking shoe and it is a pretty nice difference. Now this is also in hatch green. You'll notice that a lot of my shoes are in hatch green because I really like it or in the Utah calf like this. Now the Utah is, um, I wanna say oilier. I think it has more inherent natural oils in it, um, but um, uh, and it's a little bit fl more flexible out of the out of the box, uh, but they both wind up being very very close long term. So, uh, and both really designed to look like Russian reindeer, uh, and of course neither of them are. So, but uh, very very interesting. Now you can see the last on this is much more similar. Um, now it also has a lot of fudging. The fudging is even more obvious on the Enzo. What's interesting about this is this has a rubber sole, a Vibram rubber sole. Uh, which is a, a, a difference again. Uh, and you, as you'd expect, the edge has no finishing because it's a rubber sole. So again, interesting, a little different, but something to make you think, you know, hey, what about this, right? So now we're gonna move on to the um, more expensive categories. This is um, on the vast that you last, this is an Ascot Con. Uh, this is sewn in Northampton, has a, um, this is the very high-end type of stitch pattern, and this is a bud stitch. All right, very, very nicely done, good skin stitch as part of that. Now this is burgundy hatch grain, and these were a little on the tight side, so when I stretched them, it stretched out the grain a little bit, which you can see, certainly not anything bad. And, um, you can see the, uh, the heel cap on these is quite a bit longer. It goes very far forward from the heel. All right, also, um, yeah, it has the seam in the back. Um, very, very good shoes. Um, couldn't be happier with them. They really do nice work. Also JR soles, and these have a Lulu tip on them as well. Um, no, uh, no fiddle back though. That's not a thing that they do at Vass. Now, the next one I'm going to show is actually a suede. This is a Bontoni. Now, Bontoni is going to be different because they do something different with the pattern, right? So you get some that are um, like your typical um, derby, which we will have a few of. And then you get some with the double top line. This kind of combines both of those. So you have a double top line and you have a derby, but kind of looks more like a saddle shoe. And with the same color on color, it is very subtle, but combining a saddle shoe with a split toe is very Bontoni, okay? They call this the Quasimodo, I think for that reason. Uh, really nice Vibram Commando sole, um, Norwegian welt again, different kind of Norwegian welt, a little bit on the rough side, but again, handwork, okay? So, um, just a patch on the heel. So an interesting, an interesting dichotomy, right? Hand welted, very, very different, but still quite, quite interesting. Now the next one we're going to do is also from Italy. So uh, the Bontoni is Italy, the Enzo is Italy, and this is a Paolo Scafora, also Italy. And as we look at this, you can see, wow, the proportion is really different. This toe is much longer. Now this is elevated. It's a very different kind of stitch, right? But 
very nice, very well formed one. This is in Positano calf, so it's different. It also has this great patina that they put on it. This does have a double top line, right? also a Norwegian stitch, but unlike the Bontoni, this is extremely, extremely clean. Right? Then as you look at the sole, it does have a fiddle back waist, although slight, and this beautiful sole here as well. Um, and this is a um, blind stitch as well. So. As you can see, very cool. This apron is more rounded, and less elongated, and really goes well with the longer toe. Okay, so Paolo Scafora versus Mirmen. You're talking about a thousand dollars more for the for the Paolo Scafora. It's a lot of extra money for more shoe. Um, the question really is: is is it worth the money? And that I leave to you. Hopefully I'm giving you enough examples of things that are different. But this work here, this work, the work on the Norwegian even compared to these, uh, in my mind, much, much higher end. So food for thought there. Now, the next one that we have is in more of an exotic leather, uh, which does impact the price, but these are normally gonna run, they're gonna start at about 1400 euros. Uh, and this are, these are St. Crispin's. But it's in bison, which is gonna be a couple hundred euros more. Um, and then I had uh, a 360 uh, Norwegian welt put on this. Okay, also very clean. And um, then the soles okay, are closed channel, okay? So you can see here the edge where the, they were open and then they were hammered shut. And of course they put the toe plates on as well. Right, and they put my initials on there. Nice work on the heel. So again, compare, okay? There's no line here where they closed it. So they actually folded the edge back and did it like so. These are JR soles. Now, you know, St. Crispin's doesn't use JR soles, but the soles are, uh, are pretty darn good, okay? Um, so I, I don't think that that's gonna be necessarily a bad thing. And these soles, of course, are also incredibly thick. Which, uh, which does help uh, with the wear as well. So um, now these are, you know, custom lasted trees, um, hollow trees, very, very nice. And of course, as I said before, these are Norwegian stitched, and this is bison leather. Now you can see that is an yet another type of join, similar really to what we looked at with the Enzo Bonifé, but a little different. And then of course, this very, very clean, butt stitch. Now, if you didn't look at the difference in patterns on the leather, it would be harder to tell. Now, what's interesting is that they have the really, really big pattern on the inside, really small pattern on the outside. So a lot of time and care went into choosing how to put that shoe together, something that I'm always pretty excited about. Now, with that, we're going to get back to hatch grain. And this is an Acme. Now, Acme is a bespoke shoemaker that has a few ready-to-wear styles, and this is the William X, and uh, one that I was lucky enough to pick up. Um, and, uh, the, you know, you just reach out to them on Instagram, and you can order from them directly. Um, I sent them my measurements. We went through the process. Um, they, uh, they did not do trial shoes or anything like that for me. They basically said, yes, you will fit in this size. Candidly, um, they were very interested in my size in St. Crispin's and some others, so I think that they uh, tend to base it off of that. But the shoes fit remarkably well, and look at that pattern. Now, you know, the pattern is absolutely stunning. It's very, very clean, and it's very, very smooth to the touch, even though there's a great texture there. They have this beautiful skin stitch here. Okay, not quite a butt, but very, very close, right? Um, the uh, Norwegian welt, it's very, very well done. And of course you have the sole and really, really nice fiddle back waist. So the, um, the arch here on these shoes is great. Like I, I actually took some pictures uh, walking through the snow on these where you could see the front footprint and the heel print. 
but nothing in between. Snow was maybe a couple centimeters thick. So a very interesting um, look to the way um, we did it. Now, heels on this. This is a traditional derby. Heels on this right at the heel. Now the big differences are, you know, you look at the stitch density, right? Let's look at the stitch density side by side. All right. There versus there. That's a pretty big difference there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting difference. Now, these shoes are going to run, you know, 1800 to 2000 bucks versus these are 500 So some fairly significant differences in price and quality. And I leave it to you to decide whether or not those differences are important enough to you. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. Thanks so much for looking and watching my hand-welted split toes. And uh, what about Meerman? I think Meerman makes a pretty good shoe. Um, definitely uh, price to value ratio is very, very high. And um, if you're more interested in how the shoe looks and less interested in how it feels, um, Meerman can be a really, really good shoe for you. I can tell you, you know, this is symmetrical, this is asymmetrical. There's tons of differences on these shoes that are very, very difficult to see, but very easy to feel. And again, that all depends on what's important to you. So thanks again for watching.